can we can I can put them up like that, and we can vaguely see the slides, but um, it's very bright. Um, mainly, we can see you. Um, Well, yes, so, so we can turn the lights. Where are the lights? Where is this one? Ah, uh, no, it's still flowing. I think you can lower the blinds too. Do we want to lower the blinds? We want mood lighting? Also, oh, Simon, okay. you should yeah. check that your uh, device is actually charging because one of those does not function properly. One of the. Um, so just check that you're actually plugged in because I noticed last time that one mm -hmm. of the. Uh, yeah, oh. Right. So oh. So, 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 so right. So it check that you're thinks I'm on. I'm, I'm on each you, bro. Right. The yeah. Network, it does. So, that one does. Yeah. Yep. Hmm? Right. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll go with this anyway. Um, it still can't see the slides, but that's not so much of a problem. At least people will hear what's being said. Yeah. Okay. So, over to Thomas. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, preview stuff. Uh, I'm gonna go through a bit back background, uh, see how it came to be and why, and uh, who's behind it. Uh, then talk about the advantages, uh, some alternatives, and then go more into uh, the architecture and uh, yeah, how I set up Spoken, uh, show some resources, and uh, I can go through something of what I've done uh, that's interesting. And yeah, and so background. Um, so you have this Chronos group, which is a consortium. It's a, a collaboration of other kind of company businesses that get, gets together to create the uh, open standard APIs. And um, yeah, here you have uh, the members. It's over 130. And the top behind the gray background is slightly, you can see, barely in the slides. And there you have like the big companies like uh, Google, Sony, and Apple, AMD, Graphics, uh, yeah, so their goal from Chronos is uh, having media, uh, it's graphics and compute uh, APIs, and their ecosystem, uh, what they've been working on is uh, from yeah, audio, uh, uh, yeah, images, you yeah, probably know OpenGL and OpenGL ES, and also yeah, WebGL and stuff. And so there's a lot of standard st standard uh, APIs made development. More is it? Um, so yeah, uh, so Cornus Group was founded in 2000, but OpenGL is a lot older than that. And so what happened there is that OpenGL and the OpenGL architecture review board was founded in uh, 92. Uh, and uh, that uh, review board was only uh, focused on uh, the OpenGL and the future of OpenGL. And uh, in 2000, it, a lot of it has changed and they needed a more um, uh, a control over not only G uh, graphics and uh, OpenGL, but other uh, APIs that you saw previously. Uh, so yeah, in 2000, Open Chrome's group was founded, and uh, in 2006, the uh, OpenGL was transferred to the Chrome's group, and so they could have a uh, collaboration, and you can set a kind of strategy towards the different APIs and uh, have it more yeah, easier to talk to each other in a sense. Um, yeah, and then in 2013, MD and DICE uh, created this uh, very low level mental uh, API. And um, uh, they donated this API to the Chronos group, so they had a foundation to work on uh, with the uh, Vulcan, and, um, which they started in 2014 and uh, was released in 2016. And another reason, uh, because there was this demand of a lot of lower uh, graphics API, is that there is a huge amount of different platforms these days that it was like more than 20 years ago. You have like smartphones, you have, uh, well, 3D printers, 
drones, whatever, cars. There's a lot of technology that's using a GPU to this, this, this. And so there was this demand. And uh, yeah. So the advantages you get with Vulkan uh, is that you can uh, you can unify uh, OpenGL and OpenGL ES. So you don't need two APIs, two libraries uh, to get the built things. And as you can see, uh, you have a lot more responsibility and a lot more uh, yeah, things you can take yeah, control over in the Vulkan uh, in, uh, in compared to OpenGL. Uh, the drivers uh, is a lot more complex, and it gets um, a lot smaller and simpler uh, when using Vulkan. Um, yeah, so this reduces driver overhead, it better scales to multi-core CPUs, and you can uh, handle the memory management and thread, uh, which again makes it easier uh, to port to other platforms. It's kind of the main uh, reason. Um, the other thing is that they're having a new uh, standard uh, reportable intermediate representation. This is, um, you're probably familiar with GLSL, the shader language. Um, now you still use that, but you compile it to these uh, spur v binary files that you feed to your application instead. So this means that your uh, graphics driver don't need a high level uh, language translator, it only needs to uh, compile binaries, making it a lot faster. Um, so yeah, it's reduced the runtime shader compilation time. And this is also uh, a new, it's first open standard for API for parallel computing graphics, meaning that this is fully contained by Chronos Group. And so other, uh, other uh, uh, libraries can use this, uh, like OpenCL, as uh, you can see in the image. Um, yeah, and also another kind of thing is that you don't need to ship the shader source, you only have the binaries, so it kind of has a measure of IP protection. Um, and yeah, this thing, um, so Spur-V is basically just 32-bit uh, words in a string. And you have uh, a lot of uh, advantages in terms of you can extend it, you can create your own shader language, probably more easier than to create a language and uh, convert it back to HLSL. Uh, so you can just uh, yeah follow some of these instructions how to do this. Um, and you get performance benefits. And it's easily extended. Uh, yeah, so alternatives. Uh, so I mentioned Mantle, which is Vulkan is uh, based on. This is now used as a testbed with future APIs. Uh, so nothing much about that. Uh, now DirectX 12 is the window uh, specific uh, API. And it has the same goal as uh, Vulkan, as a low level, and you can uh, use multi-threading and have these uh, uh, yeah, uh, features. But, uh, however, the cross platform the kind of thing of it is that it only supports Windows 10 devices. And Vulkan supports Windows 7, 8, 10, and Android, and something called Tyson. And uh, Apple has this Metal API. It's very similar to both OpenGL and OpenCL. And uh, it's also very popular. It's been used by uh, developers of all sizes, like Gameloft, uh, Square Enix, uh, I think Unity also, or something. Um, that's something I would do. Uh, yeah, um, it's tightly integrated with their developer tools, which is nice. Um, yeah, that's kind of the alternatives. So, kind of what you can get of this is that if you want to have the best and the most kind of standard whatever engine, you can't just rely on Vulkan. You have need a mental API, for instance, to support Apple. Um, yeah, so a little bit about the architecture. Uh, so this was updated for not long ago. Uh, it's a lot better, the documentation about the open loader. And so it's a layered architecture uh, containing these elements. So you have your Vulkan application. You uh, pass in a Vulkan uh, function. The loader is responsible to pass it through the layers that you specify. And uh, it then has to check for its supported ICD uh, installable client driver, which uh, is a link to the physical graphics uh, device that you have. And uh, so the execution model, it's kind of, uh, uh, yeah, some, some more complex. Uh, and uh, uh, let's try to explain this. So uh, in this green box, uh, local application, 
you have a command buffer, which is a uh, buffer with row commands, maybe copy some buffers. Uh, and when you, you have to uh, submit this to a queue, and a queue has uh, features like uh, you can do graphics, you can do compute, transfer, sparse memory management. And you can have a lot of different queues that can uh, collaborate and work together. Uh, and so that belongs to the same family. And then these queues uh, uh, is linked to a device. And device is just a logical representation of a physical device, which is the actual graphics uh, card. Um, this is uh, probably a lot better explained in their, uh, in their documentation. Um, yeah. And so when I tested the uh, Vulkan, I followed a tutorial, a very good one. I'm going to share the link with you. Uh, so yeah, uh, you, to get started, you at least need, uh, uh, well, you don't need SDK, but it's a lot easier. Uh, if you choose to not do it with SDK, you only need the header files and the layer files and the GSLang validator, which translates your GLS code into the SPRB binaries. Um, uh, so yeah, the header files and the JSON validator is easy to get. The layer files, it's kind of, yeah, uh, not that easy. I find it a lot more more trouble to access and get them. So I just installed SDK. It's a lot easier. Um, yeah, I can show you. So this, yeah, this is the tutorial link. It's Joe Zanderix. I don't know if you know about it. It's really good. Um, Who, who's who's used the um, the Henrix one? Yeah, so I followed that one and I have uh, refactored um, a lot of that code so it's kind of a little more easy, yeah, readable and maybe more, uh, yeah, to try to separate those platform dependence, it was not platform independence. Uh, and Is your repo um, open source? Open source, so yes. We, we can so you can it. check that out as well. Uh, it's only support uh, Windows platform. Uh, but uh, yeah, Magnus Bjergri uh, has uh, has made it able to uh, run on Linux, but uh, uh, that's on his branch or his, his branch, yeah. right. which may or may not be public. I think it's public. It yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's see. I can. So this is the tutorial, and it's working. Um, however, there's there is uh, some errors, not that it breaks or anything, but there's some memory that's not set when you first run it. I don't exactly know what it is, but I feel like it's uh, the render function runs once before the Vulkan is uh, initialized and everything, uh, but I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, if I scale, it disappears, so it's not the best. Um, but yeah. Uh, it's one thing I would want to show you. It's uh, it's one thing that got me in trouble. It's that uh, when you create a window in Windows, you also need a uh, a surface that you can draw to that you create from Vulkan, and you pass that uh, that uh, surface to the window. And when you create the window, you want to specify the height and length. And so uh, in the render, you have to uh, when you draw, there was this problem with uh, it kind of drew the entire window uh, instead of the surface. Yeah? Could you zoom in a little bit? Oh, sure. That's easier to How do I do that there? It might be control plus. So, yeah, I tried that. It doesn't work. Or the percentage. You can see you've seen it down the bottom of the numbers. Yeah, right right, right over the numbers. Simple results. Oh, right, right. Yeah, there. Try making 200. Try uh, 200. Or might this yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's see. So this is a Windows specific file. Um, I have these global variables like the window and the window instance. Uh, in the very beginning, win main, we get the instance. So you just have that. Uh, there's some. And here you have this window class where you uh, pass the callback because we get uh, this is a function. Uh, so this runs whenever the operating system tells the window something or inputs or whatever. 
Um, and yeah, here I set some context within heights. And interesting, after you register the window class, uh, this is kind of this function right here. Uh, it's uh, nice to know about um, because when you specify your width and height, it's only on the win window, uh, but not the surface. The surface will be get some slightly, um, uh, slightly, uh, yeah, uh, not that big. And so what you do is just uh, uh, you pass in this window rect, and it will adjust uh, based on your uh, size that you specify. So the the window will actually get a little bigger so that your surface gets whatever you specified. Uh, so yeah, this uh, adjust window ref is a uh, MSDN. Uh, I highly recommend you read about that uh, API. Um, so yeah, now you don't have to care about uh, scaling the uh, surface later. Uh, yeah, so then you load the library. In order to make this happen, you need this uh, I don't know if I specified here. Because, yeah, you need this defined VPN of prototypes in order to load it dynamically, if I remember correctly. And, uh, yeah, so I don't know how much I'm going to go. Yeah, and then I have created some uh, get the progress. You, you have this, that's also something that's mentioned in the document uh, a lot better. Uh, that you have two things that you you load all your Vulkan functions um, with this uh, get instance proc address. You can do that with all the functions, although they have a second one which is get device proc address. So uh, that you get some benefits using doing that. Uh, but yeah, after you load all the functions, and now there's some platform specific things. This is the surface that I talked about that you need for Windows. If you have different platforms, you need something else. Um, and yeah, so you just initialize this, and then you can create some uh, buffers, and yeah, uh, life goes on, I guess. And there's, yeah, running. And from the callback from Windows, which I have up here, uh, we get a VM paint, so everything it scrolls, we render. Uh, so yeah, that's how I've done it there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I can try to find. I don't remember where that is. Uh, it should be somewhere. Yeah. Uh, another thing I can mention is that in OpenGL, uh, you don't need to set up your own graphics pipeline. With Vulkan, you need to do this, and that's a lot a big big function. Um, that's. Kind of boring, uh, just initializing everything uh, and make that work. But here is the graphics pipeline. All the things that need you set, the vertex input state grid, yeah, rasterization, all the shader stages, basically, um, that you need. Uh, and there's, yeah. So if you just pause on that, um, mm -hmm. so remember I talked about, like, we talked about there being a bunch of pipeline stuff here. Yeah, so uh, how many of you are have, have done that in Vulkan so far? You've got that Vulkan. Well, I'm, I'm starting on it. You're starting on it, so, so having having access to a repo with some of that in is useful. Yeah. Uh, but the idea is that, yeah, so when I talked about there being stages and opening it, yeah, I'm doing it for you. Um, Vulkan doesn't, so that's why you have that one. And if you wanted to skip a stage in the pipeline, then you can. You just have to rewrite your OpenGL interpreter, which you might not want to do. Um, but no, so if you're going to set that to be compliant and, and do everything that Sandy does, then you need to kind of do all of those things. But it allows you to kind of basically swap out any of those parts of the pipeline now with whatever else you wanted to have there instead, or insert a new first stage in, or, yeah. So there's a bunch of things. You've got more flexibility in how you manage the pipeline, um, which also means you have to then build the pipeline, which is, yeah. As you said, annoying, but it's, oh, it's just time consuming. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so what I mentioned about the window size and stuff, uh, in the Jose Hendricks tutorial, he doesn't do the uh, adjust window rect. Instead, he uses this uh, thing when he initializes. You can again get the surface capabilities and check if the width and height is set. And if it does, then you set the window height exactly the same as the config width and height. And if not, you do the opposite. Uh, but yeah, you don't need this uh, when you do that. What I did, 
Uh, the reason I haven't removed this is that I'm not sure how Linux or other platforms are able to do it and how easy it is uh, for them. Uh, but yeah, um, I have some comments in the code somewhere. So yeah, that explains some of the problems I encountered. And uh, so yeah, if you've noted my repo, you can go through that while you're trying to do the same thing. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. Any, let's see, do I have any more fun? Questions? Okay, so um, Thomas has gone through this process and actually got Vulcan up and giving a triangle, right? Which is most of you've done OpenGL, getting to the point where you're drawing a triangle isn't usually considered success. That's usually, <laughs> ah, okay, so you got a triangle, great, yay, okay, now yeah, move on. Um, now the library works. <laughs> <laughs> so, now we've tested it. Yes, yeah, so. Um, so with doing Vulkan, it means that you guys are actually digging down into how things actually work and how the pipeline works and how memory works and and, and having to deal with um, you know the speed of any kind of stuff and and seeing that there is a yeah a transition language um, and I mean it, it, in normal languages and in, in human languages English is becoming this right so in the European Union. Union one of the things they do now is that you have things in the native language and you translate it into English. And you ship documents around in English, right? Because, you know, anyone can turn English into their local language for that. There are people who can translate from English into whatever their language is. Right? So you can kind of think of English almost as a, a SPV kind of representation that each hardware person can then can translate. And you create your high level things in, in your own language and then translate it into English when you want to share it around everyone else. Right? So, so English is becoming the cross-platform language, default language in Europe at least. Um, it'll be interesting because yes, once England leaves the EU, there won't be an English native language speaking country in the EU, even though it's the language of the EU. So mm -hmm. the French might try and make it French, we'll see. Um, I think that's what they want to do, because they want to turn it to French, but that would be a massive change. Yeah. But yeah, so um, so part of the reason why I also want to get Thomas here is there, so you guys could say hello to him, um, but also um, to look at, at thinking about what questions and also when you would like Thomas to come back and potentially look at what you guys have done and give you some feedback. Right? So um, I, I, I'd be interested in, in um, you guys can use his repo and ask him questions about Vulcan now, but you guys are just starting out, so I don't expect to that many questions. But as you develop, we can bring in, um, I've, I'm introducing Thomas to you as a resource that I can bring in later, um, and I'm gonna to sign a contract with him so I can pay him for it, um, rather than just buy him a beer. Um, so how many beers an hour do you cost? I have no idea. Because <laughs> <laughs> like one beer an hour is actually not a bad pay rate in Norway. <laughs> yeah, uh, some of the resources I want to, it's obviously this tutorial, uh, yep. it, has, it has a next stage uh, where he focuses more on the shaders, that, yep. that part I didn't do, uh, but yeah, you can go further, uh, it's a lot of stuff, it explains a lot of this, what, why he does this stuff. Uh, another thing is for, yeah, updated three days ago, uh, Vulcan had this uh, dev something uh, in Vancouver, and there's a lot of videos there, I haven't checked it, I, I hope it's good. There's like getting started with Vulkan, Vulkan tutorial, yeah, case study. I think this uh, is really interesting. Uh, another thing is the Chronos reference. You can get these reference guides free in PDF for Vulkan 1.0. Uh, yeah, so you can print this out. It might be handy when you're uh, yeah, uh, looking up their API. And here you actually have their uh, pipeline diagram as well. It would be nice to have. Uh, yeah, that's the things I wanted to share. So, questions from the audience. How do you looked at, um, you've only got the window of triangle at the moment. Have you looked at um, uh, lighting in 3D environments? No. Uh, I do set up a depth buffer. Uh, that's that's kind of, uh, I only focused on getting it kind of set up and uh, trying to uh, separate what is platform dependent and what's not. Uh, that's what my focus was. 
so yeah, you've got a depth buffer because of that bug. Yeah. So that, that means that, that in theory you can draw triangles that intersect each other. Yeah, and this shaders the tutorial here, I don't know if he has, yeah, it doesn't. Um, but yeah, this shader thing is just a, a triangle getting zoomed in and out, some sort of, yeah, uh, with different colors, if I remember. So. Um, so, in terms of, of, of lighting um, and doing <coughs> light sources, uh, you're still going to have to potentially write that GLAs out, right? So, you still write a shader that is in, in uh, that does that process. That shader gets converted into code yeah. in, S, in SPFV and then gets run in your Vulkan pipeline. This is the just line validator. You specify slash v if you can read that. Yeah, maybe. To specify Vulkan semantics, but you also have the G under OpenGL semantics, but OpenGL hasn't caught up yet, I think. So eventually, you can use uh, use this uh, binaries in OpenGL I assume, when the time comes. And so yeah, it's, I believe this uh, survey thing is going to be popular. So the question, currently there's only, yeah, when creating the shaders, that's only support for the GLCL shader language currently, or because doing like OpenCL, how does, I guess that's more of a general question, how does OpenCL, uh, or doing like general computing of graphics, sending that over to? I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just know that, um, for V and uh, supports open, both Vulkan and OpenCL. Oh, okay. Yeah. Other questions? Are everybody on Windows or some Linux? Yeah, what, what, about, what about desktop platforms like? What about like, uh, like so laptops, platforms like Windows? Windows, 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 Windows? So this is the Windows side of the room. <laughs> Uh, Windows. 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 Most is also the lag time. Um, you can develop the stuff in Linux, right? And sometimes developing in Linux is, is better um, because you tend to get more direct access to things. Um, and you don't have to do so much of the handling of the Windows and stuff. But, um, but if you are working in Windows, then Thomas's um, repo is probably quite useful because it has setting up Windows. Um, so you chose to do direct. Win32 yeah. window management. Yeah, it's uh, based on Handmade Hero. Uh, I get one through, let's just even further back, but I went through the Handmade Hero uh, thing where he sets up its own platform layer. Uh, so it's kind of the refactoring is kind of based a little bit on his technique there. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty <laughs> low level, uh, don't use much uh, library solders. Yeah. So, so one of the other options is you use, um, so uh, for our undergraduates who come through our degree, um, with, they've used SFML or SDL or um, like other window management libraries that obscure the windows handling for you. Um, whereas Thomas isn't using one of them, so he has to go straight to Win32 window handling. So have any of you done Windows 32 window handling before? Let's do that. And You've done a little bit. Touched a bit about it. Okay. Do like so. It's, it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 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 not. So if you bring up your window handling code, it, it it has a naming convention. So if you look at the naming convention for the window handling, um, you'll see that it is um, uh, they are using reverse Polish notation, I think, or or Hungarian, Hungarian notation. Hungarian rather, not Polish notation. Hungarian notation. So. Um, so where is your window handling? Yeah. Yeah, so 
so when you have a look at, at some of the, the naming conventions on on handling of windows, um, you'll see that so where you've got your window class dot LPSZ the class name. Yeah. Right? LPSZ doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Right? It's not obviously the shortening of an individual word. Right? But this is the idea of telling you something about what that thing is in its name. Right? So that is that a long what do you know? What's the so what it's type is it? Your, it's, yes, your LP LP is Yeah, it's a core pointer. Core pointer. So it's a character. It's a character yeah. string pointer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is actually the window class is of a uh, a character pointer. Um, but so in the representation space, it's using L P Z and S Z as to tell you about the type of value that is, right? So um, when you're doing stuff with the core window, you'll find a lot of that like LP if in window proc, right? So it's a long pointer to a function. So I think LP is, is Z, uh, or LP is Z work? Um, so yeah, LP is Z is a long pointer to a string, zero terminated. Right? I believe is actually what LP is Z stands for. So you could Google it. Someone can Google that. See if I'm right. Um, but I think it's a long pointer to a um, string that is null terminate zero to terminate. Yep. Long pointer. Hmm? Long pointer. What's the difference between a long pointer and a short pointer? With using 64 bit memory or 32 bit memory. Yeah. So with it, it, well. That's what I believe. Um, that's my current memory of how that works. So you should probably look it up um, to make sure that I'm not lying to you, because you know we have good. Because it's, is it the same as like far in near pointers? No, 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 it's not far in near pointers. It's um, I believe that L, the LP is for long pointer, which is the thirty. It was actually the sixty-four bit pointer space for it. Um, I believe I could be wrong. Right? It could just be for pointers, right? um, but I believe it's the long pointer, so 30 to 64-bit pointer, even though it's in 132. Um, but you can probably correct me if you, if somebody does a Google on what does LPSZ in Windows mean? LP, LPSZ, well, that's, yeah, that's the LP string. Um, that's LP C string. So, do they actually say what the LP stands for, or do they just expect you to, to know? <laughs> it's prefix with a P or an LP. Yeah, so it says there the, the Stack Overflow answer is that the LP C S T R is a constring, while the LP C S or the LP C T S T R is a const T char string. So, the T char being either a white char or char depending on whether Unicode is defined in the project. And then LPT is, or LPT is, true, is uh, a non const char string. Right, yeah. So basically what it is, so, so the idea in Linux is that they were, they were trying to tell you about the thing in the variable now, right? And so when you first hit Windows and you start dealing with it, you get these like stupid names for everything, right? And think, God, Windows people are stupid, right? Because, you know, they create stupid names for everything. Once you understand the system, it's oh, okay. So it's just, you know, it's that's, type information put into the net. That's fun when they start having to like rename types. If you if you change the type of something, then yes, you need to refactor your code and change every instance of that the name of that thing because it's changed its type. Right, so you can't just change something from to a double and say, well, hey, okay, we're actually I might put a point in here. No, 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 that's changing everything and changing its name. Um, so, so yeah, uh, and for you guys for this course, you have the options of either doing direct straight Windows handling, right? So, and you could use Thomas's example here as a way of handling the window, or you can use libraries that, that handle the window for you and then put content within that window, 
know, because that's what SDL does and SFML and, and um, GLF, yeah, yeah they, they, they handle some of the window stuff for you because they say, hey, well, you know, that a lot of garbage is just handling window. We'll abstract you, give you a uniform interface for that. And then the back end could be Windows, or the back end could be Mac, or the back end could be Linux, so that you code to a, like a basically a SPV, but for for how the window is handled. Okay? So uh, at the moment, Thomas is not doing that. He's just going straight into the, the actual Windows code. If you've not done Win32 direct stuff, it can actually be interesting to have a go at that, if that's something you want to learn. So, But then by no means you have to learn it for this course at all. I'm not I'm certainly not going to grade you on it. But, um, it can be nice to say, okay, now I'm just going to do this straight on Windows. Right? I'm, I'm not going to have a library. I'm not going to have a middleman. I'm just going to get the window direct events out of the operating system coming to my window. Right? <coughs> so one of the things you do get when you're doing this great window is so, so you're doing resizing, okay? So window resize is an event that window sends to its windows that Microsoft Windows sends to the windows that are that, that are active, right? So um, if you actually have a look at uh, the event callback, one of the the event callbacks is on a repaint and a resize. I think there are. So what have they got there? So um, system default means that you might want to scale this up a bit because no one else can see it. Um, they know that you're looking at something, but not what that thing is. So you should be able to scale that up. Uh, because you're on the secondary screen. Um, try going to the top corner. Yep, and dot, 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 and then just making that. Yep. Okay, that's it. 125. So, um, so if we were going to do some light coding and actually update some of the code, you would do it, you could, you could look at saying, well, how do we get it to do resizing properly. Right? That would be an interesting task you guys could give yourself to learn how to use Thomas' system or like to learn his code. It would be, okay, how do I learn it enough to be able to make a resize work? Right? Um, now, if I'm right, there should be, a, in the repaint, one of your system events you get is repaint. Um, is it, so, W and paint tells me the client has been changed and must be repainted. So it also gives you an XY. If you go look at W and paint, you go to it, yep. All right, so the WM paint message gives you the window handle, um, the message, and two parameters. Right? Uh, and in this case, neither of them are being used. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, because all window handles have those two data pointers, right? So they're, they're used for, for passing data. Um, so you get a web, web which gives you a, a GL, uh, which gives you the, the, the render. There should be another message which you get, which is a resize message. And there's also one that tells you what part of the window has been revealed. Right? Because from Windows, you can actually get the, like if you have two windows overlapping each other, when I remove one away, that bit that gets revealed, you can, you can get access to that piece of information. Um, I have to remember where you get that. It's obviously not from the repaint one. It must be from uh, reveal or something similar. Um, are there related messages to uh, message? So update window. The message sent when the update window a redraw. So update window. Yeah. Um, for example, draw in the client area. No, that's probably not going to be the way to do it. Um, do a Google search for partial Windows update, partial window update in Windows 10. Partial window update. So partial page update, AGX. So Win32, try adding Win32. Which one? I've tried adding to the search Win32. Yeah. Yeah. And we need something that makes it look for the, the um, API call. So um, uh, window handle, I suppose. The, yeah, if you can add the window handle, the kind of standard window handle. Like for 
Yeah, yeah, it was, was it? Yeah, exactly. What, what was it? Um, um, Win32 main window callback at that at the function name. This? Yep. No. That's not something you wrote. Yeah, I think oh, okay. that's what I passed in there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so it is your so change hand and window class. Oh no, that's also yeah. Wind 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 class. So that one. Yeah. Hand and that one. So that's the type that you didn't define. That is, yeah. So window class structure. So there are um, <clears throat> widths and heights uh, will be listed somewhere within here. Um, tank window class. There should be extra data. Uh, I think I do that uh, when I create the window. Let's go. Uh, length and uh, width and height. Yeah. yeah. Um, so so yes, yeah, so you can you can actually get yeah. So you should be able to get the information from Windows. Um, the repaint is a full repaint, um, but you're currently not dealing with it changing sizes. If you change yeah. it back to the size that it was, it will redraw. And then when you move it, it also does a redraw. Yeah. No. Uh, it just talks black. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. What is that? Uh, I have sort of have this. Okay. Uh, that's because you have to recreate your uh, entire swap chain or volume. Okay. With using the new surface sizes. And yes. Yes, I would. I, I, I would think, but you get a message at what like so you actually ask the window its its parameters and it will give you those numbers and then you have to reinitialize your Vulcan chain because because it is it's it's getting a window right and it's putting stuff into that window so it's got to know how big that window is to know how many pixels it should be rendering to put stuff into that space right so see it is quite a significant change to change this the the ratio of the window. But yeah, so resizing and changing the ratios is, is going to do a bit. There should be there should be a message around the resize. Um, this allows you to resize or even close the application. Um, okay. Right, we're at one o'clock now. Um, we'll take a fifteen minute break, fifteen minute break, and then come back here and you guys can tell me about your progress and we can go into groups and start discussing did you make any progress this week? How do I make you do more progress next week? Okay, cool. Thank you, Thank you Thomas. Yep. Now, do you want Thomas to hang around so you can ask him more questions, or do we bring Thomas back in when you've got interesting questions to ask him? Good question. <laughs> you have a few questions. But Relevant to the rest of the class. Okay. And um, I mean, if, if, if you're interested, I'd also be keen to have you come in later in the course and see how they're going and see what they're doing um, yeah. and be a reviewer of some of the work. Okay. And I'll see if I can, I'll, I'll get uh, all the depends on how much effort you want to go into to signing contracts to be paid a small amount of money or if you just want to get by your deal. It's not important really to depend on how much you find. Uh, it should be. Yeah, and you shouldn't, uh, because you've done this before, yeah, yeah, it wasn't, it should, shouldn't be much. I'm talking an hour or so, so it's a couple of years. I'll buy it every year. It's always our client. Um, the, uh, but how is the Dutch chess stuff going? So let's see, you've got one to one. Sorry, I know, I, know, I know you've got my students, but I'm interested in it. Yeah, I will. I answer the answer the answer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I had some work problems with yeah, the working yeah. yesterday. Um, uh, but it's, yeah, it's only work when you play white. Uh, just make sure that it works. Yeah, and, uh, and yeah. right there. We'll try make it. Yeah, work. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna have to see it. Look into the leaf thing. This type of thing because now it's. It knows everything, so it's not really dark. Uh, right. So I, I, I think some of that. I, I, so I know you're finding interesting resources, um, and you're finding the discussion around belief states. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, in terms of chess programming, there's a lot of resources and like, you know, and all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to business network and belief states, and like the same. Yes, yeah, uh, that's uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, more yeah. 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 I did this work in the uh, planning uh, uh, survey 
Yeah, 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 stuff. <laughs> it is, I find it fascinating. And, and um, sure, she still is. Yeah, uh, I haven't just told the Susan and Luke that's the right. Okay, right. so that, that's good. That's a nice column. So, Bruno will hopefully be nicely on task. Yeah. Um, and Jill is, is, is interested in that. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. No, good luck with it. I, 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 yeah, I, yeah. I'd love to be able to put myself into that stuff as well, but it's just a limit. I can't yeah, I understand that. Yeah, 
why you're not understanding something or what's going wrong or why it's not good. Um, and show me that this has been done. And of course, one of those things is that it had to be highly accessible. If you just wait until the last piece of synthesis, it's really hard to get down your own system, right? So, um, so work with music is important. You guys can work with music, which is important. What I like my my plan is to do the next series, to finish that next series, and to do that series and give yourself an update to the things that you see through this. So it could be a new process of project, or it could be an AI project, or so what is the background? So yeah, I, I actually what what interests you in terms of um, the stuff you're doing in your rest of the group into GPU for the kind of right? So so if there's a project you had that you did at the university, you can have a um the secret you made for that time. And so, so that's the sort of thing you can keep trying to take and build a, a small design box so you can test it. It's something you know about in terms of the stuff that we're doing rather than like, yeah, yeah. So, the thing with an AI thing you've given us done before is you're both with the AI and the computer, right? So, you think it's different to actually do that. But it's something you've already done with the thing. It's possible for the foundation. So, you make progress here. I can see the application. 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 Right, guys, where are you? Where are you? At? Tutorial. So you are looking through those tutorials. You've started working through some tutorials. You've started trying to do your tips. Like, who has had some code work on their computer? So it's not like um, the weather or some of the best players and they are not the physical devices, modern devices, and starting to get an understanding of what I'm doing. Okay, so you are working through that, so right? But you haven't, so, so, but, so you, you are compiling things that are compiling to the particular card you have in your particular machine, yeah. and it's, it's not just giving you well, it's tricks to compile for awareness as well. So, right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I'll think where you go then. Right. So you're all, you're all working along on the tutorials? Okay. So, um, where should I expect you to be by next week? Right. What expectation are you going to give me to be Triangle. grumpy about if you don't get done by next week? Triangles? Right? So you think by next week, right? You will grab now, now. So um, Thomas has something that does triangles, right? So right? So that so at the bare minimum, you would have got his stuff down and made it compile and made it run on your own damn machine. At the bare freaking minimum, right? <laughs> So, but I'd like you guys to have gone through the tutorial, and, and I think triangles by next week would be feasible. Right. So, if you're just rather than doing the the, the display, you've well, done with the display. Oh, you're done with this. But you've got a triangle. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I guess two or three pages okay. away from the part where we get the triangle. Right. So, I'm of so that yep, yep. So try and finish that today, and then you're going to move on to looking at data going forward and back, getting yeah, stuff so back, and processing. Apparently, it's almost like they might compute together a bit. So, I'm mm -hmm. so based on what I understand from Peter, is that in the OpenCL stuff, you can sort of write your shader or the kernels in mm -hmm. OpenCL and get them translated to the server format yeah. and then send that over. So I guess then I'll basically go back to scratch and start understanding how to do that. Because doing stuff with the compute 
shaders means that I will have to use the GSL lang language and that like I'll put that the stats value supports and that's basically nothing. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, compute shaders, yeah, were, were designed when you didn't have access to anything else. So um, OpenCL would be a, a better option. Yeah, thing. but I still want to do that with Docker, but yeah. I don't want to sit down and do the QSL or, yeah. or other yeah. stuff. So, no, I, okay, so you're going to try and, so for next week, you want to be getting things back for? I want to try and get right. things back so, um, but for So for next week, one of the things I'm going to go around and do is have a look on computers and see triangles coming up. <laughs> Right? A, a triangle, at least. A triangle in a window. Um, not just downloaded from the internet by typing the word triangle. <laughs> 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 uh, look at the picture of a triangle. Um, but, uh, I, you know, right? So I expect you guys get triangles. Have you done, like, have you got the image processing stuff? Yeah. Have you written the first training program? So, you've already done that, right? So for next week, what is your objective to get to? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, so, so, you, you, so, yeah. Um, so uh, next week I'll come and have a look at that. Um, so that's all the chats. Oh, no, that's <laughs>
But if you're interested, just let me know. Hey, I love this.